Hi, welcome to the Fit and Healthy Today Show. And today's topic matter is estrogen dominance. And when I address estrogen dominance today, I'm going to be focusing primarily on how it affects women. However, in a later segment, later on down the road, I'm going to address how it affects men. Estrogen dominance in females, and this is how it shows itself primarily in females. Endometriosis, which is the growth of uterus lining tissue that grows outside of the uterus, climbs all over, it can be dangerous, but more of a nuisance than anything, can cause heavy menstrual periods. Uterine fibroids, they're benign growth tumors that grow in the uterus uh, to very large si uh, sizes and uh, can cause heavy bleeding and eventually maybe even some physicians' hysterectomies um, are recommended. Polycystic ovarian syndrome, I'm seeing this a lot among young women. They'll cycle once every three months, once every six months. Ah, that's not normal. That's not normal. And, and we'll talk about further on down the road, the types of estrogens that are contributing to this in our young women, which is contributing to infertility, weight gain, breast cancer, and in the guys later on, we'll talk about prostate cancer. These types of estrogens, primarily environmental estrogens, xenoestrogens, the bisphenol A, the dioxins, pesticides, herbicides, fuel oils, all the chemicals that we use in our environment that are estrogen mimickers or um, estrogen or disrupt um, the estrogen flow in the body. Um, there are some studies, Dr. John Lee talks about this in his book, What Your Doctor May Not, may not Tell You About Menopause that these type of estrogen mimickers can be up to six million times stronger in their, uh, than the natural estrogens produced by our body in stimulating estrogen receptors. And that comes with those side effects. So we have to address this issue of how we can reduce the estrogen dominance. Um, there are studies that support that PCPs and dioxins can cause spontaneous Immediate endometrial, endometrial growth. Oh my gosh, dioxins from meat, fish. They're produced by emissions and they lay on the fields. The cows eat those emissions. <sighs> the airplanes are flying in above and the fuel oil all dumps around. It's on our grass, it's on our food, it's on everything. And we're ingesting it. It's in our water tables because when the rains come in, it washes it into the ground and then we drink the water becoming problematic for not just humans, but animals as well. And potentially down the road, the ability of, of men and women to reproduce. Um, we'll talk about that further in some studies later on. Obesity and poor liver function, estrogen dominance. When the liver cannot metabolize these estrogens because of excessive alcohol, bad diet, the list goes on, then you end up with this, these um, estrogens that are just free-floating, damaging, storing in the body fats, and causing us to get fatter. And what's interesting is once we get fatter and all the estrogens store in our fatty tissues, then the estrogens make more fat, fat makes more estrogen, and it makes it a very vicious cycle in order to lose weight. So estrogen dominance, I think a major contributing factor to weight gain we're seeing, particularly in our younger people. The obesity levels are out of control in our young. Gosh, um, good, lack of good bacteria in the gut. And I could get technical about this, but basically there are certain chemicals that are released by these good bacteria that help you metabolize and neutralize the effects of these um, xenoestrogens to get them removed out of the bowel when the fiber is high enough in the diet. You don't have these good bacteria which are destroyed by antibiotics, steroidals, fluoride in the water. Oh boy, these estrogen metabolites just get reabsorbed right back into the body to do more damage, particularly the xeno xenoestrogens. Now the natural estrogens found in our body, which are estriol primarily, we've got a little bit of estradiol, a little teeny bit of est uh, estrum, uh, are all natural good estrogens that do not cause cancer. These do. These do. I only mentioned just the uh, short-term uh, effects of estrogen dominant. The long-term is uterine cancer, breast cancer, 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 because these, as I'll talk about further in the research portion, they damage our DNA. So 
There's a very good study by Harvard University that showed one hour of exercise a day, that's hard, I know, but one hour lowered the risk factors for endometriosis to one-fifth, 20% of what women who don't exercise do. Apparently sweating off that fat, getting it gone, getting things moving, the liver moving, the bowel moving, seems to just lower that incidence of uh, endometriosis. Good study by Harvard. Those are types of studies are appreciated. Non-drug company sponsored studies. I think probably the major contributing factor when we're talking about estrogen dominance is diet, diet, diet. Like I mentioned before, our foods are full of chemicals. And everybody's talking about this global warming, everything else. They're not addressing the fact that we're so full of chemicals, we may not see what's going to happen down the road because of all the reproductive problems we're going to see. You know, not long ago, there was a study done in New York City. And I didn't write this down here, but I thought I'd mention it. It's important. And they thought, oh man, teenage birth rates, they're down. This is terrific. We're doing our job. We're communicating to the kids. Ha, ha, ha. They found out it was the same usage, condom usage and birth control usage as before. It's just the girls couldn't get pregnant. 25% reduction because of infertility. I can't tell you the number of young women that are walking into the, my store in Lompoc and saying to me, oh, I'm hard, I, I cycle once every three months, once every six months, I can't get pregnant, I'm infertile. Aye, here we go once again. I'll talk about more research later on on that too. Eat only organic as much as you can. Occasionally we all go out to dinner, some barbecues at a friend's house, not organic. Yay. The liver can handle all of that. But when you can get a hold of it at your local grocery stores, your health food stores, wherever, you grow, it in, grow it yourself. That way you know for sure it's organic. Eat organic unsprayed produce and organic meat as much as you can, particularly if you know you're estrogen dominant with the endometriosis, cysts, or fibroids. That's a must. When my customers come in and they're talking about those issues, um, I was a professional trainer for a lot of years in counseling weight loss, and that was always one of the first things I talked about was eating a lot of organics. Eating beets, carrots, artichokes, onions, garlic, and lots and lots of greens. Get the liver to detoxify, move along. So if the liver's functioning better, then the liver is gonna metabolize the estrogens, and they're not going to get unused and store in fatty tissues. They're going to get metabolized, utilized, and right to the bowel and eliminated, not reabsorbed. Drink eight glasses of water per day. Water detoxes. Water detoxes. I don't know how many times I can say that to people. Anytime you're ill or you have any issues, it seems like you always, the docs always all say this too, eight glasses of water a day. Um, Eating fiber-rich foods, remove those estrogen metabolites, and once again, organic fiber, preferably from fruits and vegetables. But there are supplements that you can get on fibers like psyllium husk, flaxseed fiber. I know in my store I have all organic sources that you can use for fiber to help remove these estrogen metabolites and a lot of the other toxins as well. You should be having two to three bowel movements a day. If you're not, that's not right. You got to eliminate those toxins and get them gone or all of those types of chemicals, girls and boys alike, get all reabsorbed back into the body. Avoid red meat, particularly ah, standard grocery store red meat. You, you, red meat, you got to go organic. You, you got to know from whence it comes as best you can. And even organic sources, I know some of them are pasture fed and hence the airplanes fly over and there it is. But at least you know the grains and those types of feeds that are being given to the cattle are organic and unsprayed, and so it's not going to store in the fatty tissues of the cows, and then yummy, yummy, let's eat all our dioxins and chemicals. Um, when we're talking about what we can do to help treat this, hmm, diet is paramount, but there are supplements that can aid and abed the elimination or lowering the estrogen dominance, or at least reduce some of the, the side effects that are associated with estrogen dominance. Lots of good books written, um, Dr. John Lee, Christine Northrup, a lot of books written on this issue about estrogen dominance. And we're seeing it in Scientific America. We're seeing it in, in studies that are coming out of the universities. Um, 
Oh, there's things that we can do. Number one, natural progesterone creams. Um, natural progesterone creams, what happens is these estrogens, these very strong estro xenoestrogens, go into the estrogen receptors and they go into the progesterone receptors and they go into the testosterone receptors and they fill it all up. So women's moods go crazy, their hormones go crazy, they get endometriosis, they get it all. All the female related problems. What the natural progesterone will do is it'll kind of kick the guys out of the parking lot and say, hey, xenoestrogens, get out of my space. And so it'll fill the progesterone receptor sites to where the body can get rid of those xenoestrogens through the bowel, get them gone. Uh, very helpful, I've seen fibroids shrink uh, by using this. I've seen endometriosis reduction. Um, and I have a few healthcare professionals, including medical doctors, that are recommending this to their patients uh, when they have those fibroids, endometriosis, and polycystic issues. DIM, very well studied and actually pharmaceutical studied. However, I think they couldn't quite derive the chemical out of that to make it an expensive drug because it comes from broccoli. So <laughs> heavy concentrations of organic broccoli and it takes each 100 milligrams, 50 to 100 milligrams is about a pound of broccoli, and that's a lot of broccoli to eat. But two to 300 milligrams a day, and it assists the liver in estrogen detoxifying of xenoestrogens. So it binds to those xenoestrogens, takes them in the bowel, bye-bye, boys. So if we can get rid of those, move them out of the body quicker, we can reduce that estrogen dominance. Vitamin E, and vitamin E is recommended a lot for fibrocystic breast disease, and, and it also, too, aids in the estrogen metabolization and utilization and removal as well too. And I know for me, it aided my uh, lowering between that progesterone cream and DIM, I have no more fibroids and I had fibrocystic and even had a couple of breast lumps removed um, years ago. So it's all in my family. So I recognize my family tends to be estrogen dominant. But when I utilize this types of supplements, I don't have those issues anymore. So it can be done. Essential fatty acids. Now, you can get this through um, organic uh, nuts, walnuts, almonds, pecans, uh, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds. You can get it in those sources as well. Or you can do flax oil in combination, or fish oil in combination with borage oil. I think we don't get enough what are called good omega-6s. You, you hear the doctor saying, don't do omega-6s, because there are different classifications of omega-6s. Some of them are, are like meat sources, and which are hormone disrupting. And then some of them are plant sources, which are hormonal stabilizing. And borage oil and evening primrose oil, I can remember having pretty bad PMS after my birth of my 23-year-old and going in and I got this young, young hippie doctor. And I went in and she said, honey, you got to try some evening primrose oil. And so I was like, I wasn't into supplements back then, but I listened to her and it actually really did help. And now where I'm at, it is an absolute must for hormonal stabilization. Uh, a good multiple vitamin, uh, particularly high in Bs, or you're going to add an extra B50 twice a day, once again, aids in estrogen metabolism. If you're noticing on here, you know, oftentimes I'll have this lengthy, lengthy list of things you can do, and, and there's probably more I could add on here, but it's pretty reasonable um, in the things that we can do, particularly if you have this problem. It doesn't take much. Um, a little bit more pricey on the organic produce, but... Geez, I kind of think of myself as being the Cadillac or the Mercedes, and so I'm going to treat my body like that because I only got one. Only got one. No, nothing else is going to replace it. There's no bionic body parts for me. So, um, milk thistle and ester C. When we combine those, those um, milk thistle and ester C are very strong antioxidants for the liver. Also helps with the skin tissue and, and the youthing qualities as well that us women in my age category need. But milk thistle is very, very um, helpful in liver enzymes and very strong antioxidant for the liver. Magnesium citrate. For women who have endometriosis or fibroids, it can help relax the muscles, the uterine muscle, so they don't spasm quite as much, uh, quite as much and reduce the symptoms. Green tea and shark cartilage. I'm going to use a fancy term on you here, and it's called angiogenesis. Don't have to spell it. I didn't even bother writing it down because I knew you wouldn't write it down. But anything that's anti-angiogenesis cuts off the blood supply to tumors. That includes cancer tumors, um, as a side note, and some of these things are research for that. So increasing your green tea or utilization of shark cartilage can help cut off the blood supply to these tumors. 
Vitex, red clover, raspberry, red raspberry. There are um, herbal formulas out there and herbal blends that you can find that contain, well, you can get these individually or combinations of these, which can, these can help with hormonal stabilization and obviously getting you to where you're stable between your estrogens, progesterones, and testosterone is where you want to be. Next, we're going to be moving on to the fitness portion of our show. Thank you very much. I'm Heike Perciano. You join me for the fitness portion of our show. Mm, laying down in a pronate position like this. Since we know that estrogens tend to store around the middle, estrogen dominant people, male and female, and like I mentioned before, guys looking down at your toes, girls trying to look and see whether or not you can see or turn around, or you got this little thing hanging over your bathing suit, estrogen dominant. So I'm going to show a few exercises that can help with toning these little, little things down in here, hopefully, in addition to your cardiovascular or whatever weight lifting or dance routine you might have to help you burn off fat. Um, I like to do it in a lay down position, raise your legs up, and then you're gonna slightly pump up, holding and supporting your neck with your hand, because I don't want none of this going on. Okay, we want to pull up with our abs. And then, then to change the focus on this exercise, we can do 15 reps that way, put our legs down, and then pump it up another 15 this way. If you can do five sets of each, 15 up, 15 down, five times, you're doing good. Next, I'd like to point out an exercise for the lower abs, which a lot of us women tend to have a problem. A lot of guys will hold it higher, but us women can hold it lower. And these are exercises which I am very mindful of the back. I put my hands underneath my buttocks trying to force my back into the floor, kind of pushing my butt up a little bit. And then very basically all I'm doing is this type of exercise. Now it's more difficult if I put my legs out, but once again then it's harder on the back. So keeping it slightly folded in, bring it up, in, and then the kicks. If you can do five sets of 15 sets each, no more than two to five seconds rest in between sets, you're going to be my hero. Next, we're going to be moving on to the science research portion of our show. Thank you. portion of our show and as promised in, in the earlier segment, the first segment, um, I'm going to talk about quite a bit of the estrogens we're finding in the environment and some of the latest studies that have come out on how they affect the body. Very first one uh, came out uh, 2004 actually, it's been out for a while and it had to do with the study of uh, dioxins. What they found is during pregnancy, within six days after ingesting dioxin sources, remember we told you that it can come from meat sources, um, fuel oil sources, it stopped the replication and the proliferation of mammary gland breast cells from developing. Hence, I have tons of women that come into the store now uh, with basically saying, I don't have enough milk or I don't have enough breast development. What's going on in that? And so what I'm seeing in some of this research, it's been around for a while, that's just now coming out, these types of dioxins store in the fatty tissues of the body, and guess what us women have? Our breasts are fatty tissues. Particularly mammary uh, development, you get an increased size in breast tissue. So therefore, a cut in the size of the breasts and then the ability or inability to feed our babies. Oh. Another sign of an estrogen dominance happening uh, and going on. Bisphenol A. Mm. You've probably heard a lot about this on the news, our little plastic containers, unless they say BPA free. This is a chemical, a fuel oil type of chemical that they find in plastics, particularly in American plastics. 
other countries like Canada, and uh, they kind of care about uh, what's in their plastics and they don't want their public to be exposed to it. However, in the United States, it doesn't seem to be of a major concern. What they're finding is in a study with rats and mice, and see if I can get you the um, uh, research team. Um, gosh, and this looked like it was a research team that was all-encompassing different countries involved. What they found was there was a broad exposure of bisphenol A that are causing extreme harmful abnormality on a cellular level to rats. So guess what? Hmm. We're mammals. And so we're going to see cellular activity, cellular function, DNA, all these things being and affecting bisphenol A. Um, particularly, we're seeing quite a bit when they did cultures on the my, my, their hearts, they were finding uh, that these cardiac cells, they didn't function with the same energy level. Hmm. Higher estrogen levels, heart not working as well. I wonder, blood pressure, all kinds of wonderful little things that are coming, low heart output on a DNA, RNA, cellular level with these bisphenol A's. So whenever you can, get the water bottles that are bisphenol A or buy them. You can get them in, in various sporting goods stores, Sports Authority, wherever, that say BPA-free. I know my, my little Boy Scout, uh, Augie's got one when he goes on his campouts. Additional amount of research now finding that bisphenol A affects fertility. Now remember how in our earlier in our lecture we talked about Hmm. estrogen dominance and how it can contribute to infertility. Well, there's studies now. Uh, this was the uh, Indoctrine Society 91st Annual Meeting in Washington, D.C. Uh, found that there were fertility defects in mother's offsprings. In other words, we have the babies and guess what? They're going to have fertility problems 20 years down the line because these bi bisphenol A's are storing in the fatty tissues and they're changing the RNA DNA on a cellular level. So we're talking about changing RNA DNA in a developing fetus. We're talking permanent damage. Permanent damage. Somebody's got to speak up or do something about all these chemicals going in our environment and the exposure to people. And our government seems to be remaining relatively silent. We've got studies, good, I mean, the Yale, that study I just mentioned coming out of Yale, we're seeing all of these studies coming out. I don't see any legislation saying DuPont stop manufacturing these chemicals, they're hurting our people. Write your congressmen and senators, seriously. Um, on a happier note, resveratrol comes from red wine. And we've mentioned it before because there was a study not long ago that talked about an increase in lifespan with resveratrol. Well, now we're finding also this red wine derivative. Um, and here we go. Therapeutic potential for cancer chemo prevention. In other words, protecting the heart from the damaging, uh, damage that chemotherapy can cause. Uh, obviously, we've seen research on it as far as anti-aging is concerned. When my co I have customers nowadays because of all the studies that are coming in, and that's one of their number one antioxidants besides vitamin C that they're taking. In addition, even the lowest dose of resveratrol in 100 milligrams improved cell survival in the cardio and nervous system, in the heart, vascular system, good antioxidant, anti-aging, oh my gosh. You can drink that glass of red organic wine, but it's pretty not, not going to have the concentrations that you're going to get in a supplement with resveratrol. Um, in, we kind of address a little bit of weight loss having to do with estrogen dominance again. And here we have another study now on vitamin D. And I'm going to read this uh, quote, vitamin D deficiency is associated with obesity. Really? Wow. So what that means is we're not sure whether or not people who are obese are low in vitamin D or whether or not low vitamin D is causing obesity. In other words, if you have an obesity problem, get tested for your vitamin D levels. Get that vitamin D. The doctors, I've been seeing a lot of my senior customers coming in, the docs are checking for vitamin D levels. Get tested. If you're low on vitamin D, take the supplement. 
In addition, uh, the higher baseline vitamin D levels predicted a greater loss of abdominal fat. Stores around the middle. Like to see those gone. We like to see our toes. I'd like to move on next. Newborn weights affected by environmental contaminants. Once again, more environmental stuff. And this was done out of the Santa Justine University Hospital Research out of Canada. Came out of Montreal in June 15th of 2009, not very uh, long ago. And what they're finding is because of all these estrogen dominant contaminants, we are having genital malformation in our male newborns and a decrease in male fertility later on. Isn't that wonderful? Once again, we're finding all these environmental contaminants. Our babies aren't being protected. They're being with, uh, stored in the mother's bodies. Ah, and then you got babies who get to have the long-term RNA, DNA side effects of all these contaminants. I really want to mention a study that came out for a lot of uh, my dementia customers, or dementia people, um, Zyprexa. Zyprexa, even though the farm, Lilly, Eli Lilly, had seven studies that supported that there were no, no, if, no, no effectiveness of Zyprexa for people in dementia, they still went ahead and promoted the drug on an off-label to the doctors to be given to dementia patients. And as a result, they just got hammered with multi-millions of dollars. Now they want us to believe that Zyprexa, which just got proved by the EPA, is good for, in children, good for schizophrenia and bipolar. Unstable kids to begin with, um, and you're going to turn around and we're going to expect to believe Eli Lilly is going to tell us the truth about this chemical going in our baby's brains? I don't think so. They've got these signed letters uh, from doctors who are agreeing to put their names on studies and then turn around and these studies aren't actually being conducted. Don't trust them. Don't go for it. Unless you see double-blind placebo studies from a university or some really reputable organization, don't trust them and neither should the FDA. Bad, bad, bad. I want to mention just as a closing note, I know I have a lot of customers that use marijuana for pain and it's very helpful, but if you're using marijuana for other sources, three or four cigarettes is equivalent to smoking 20 cigarettes. That's how much damage it causes to the lungs in your RNA, DNA. So if you like your marijuana, don't think it's not doing damage. It's causing damage to your lungs. Thank you so much for joining our show today. I hope that this information will push you into researching, finding out things for yourself, and taking your health into your own hands. Thank you very much.